welcome to EPG Patshala. Today we are discussing module number 20 which is about psychological principles of using ICT in education. After going through this module, you will be able to state various principles of using ICT in education. That is principle of split attention effect, multimedia principle, redundancy principle, coherence principle, personalization principle, principle of special contiguity principle of temporal quantity and principle of individual differences. Even you will be able to explain these principles and you will be able to apply these principles while using ICT in education. To begin with, while developing any PowerPoint presentation or even for developing online courses, you may reconsider how you will while designing PowerPoint presentation or developing online courses, you may reconsider how will you engage your students with the material without having much face to face interactions. When you watch videos or watch the images or any type of e-content, you may find some of the e-content or some of the material is more effective than that of others. Sometimes you feel some of the material helps to gain better results and you may be curious to know actually what makes this difference. You must be curious to know what makes this difference and how to make use of ICT to get better result or you must be curious to know what makes this difference and how to make use of ICT to get better result. How to make use of ICT to help your learner to make more retention. Let us see what makes it possible. Cognitive theory of multimedia consists of three assumptions. That is, there are two separate channels for processing information that is auditory and visual. There is a limited channel capacity and third one, learning is an active process of filtering, selecting, organizing and integrating information. Based on these assumptions, there are different psychological principles of creating any e-content or multimedia which is important aspect of ICT. First principle is multimedia principle. If you want your students to understand the use of hard disk, then definitely the picture with proper labeling would be very helpful to make students to understand the concept. Words help us to express the message we wish to convey. Verbal messages are efficient and easy to create. Pictures helps to concrete and clear messages one wish to convey. And this multimedia principle suggests include both words and graphics because students learn better from words and graphics than words alone. Graphics helps active learning. Students make mental connection between the pictures and text. Words alone may cause slow learning process. When words and pictures both presented, definitely learners have an opportunity to construct verbal and visual mental images and to build connections between the two. Learning occur by the encoding of new information in permanent memory called long term memory. According to the theory called dual encoding, content communicated with gra uh, text and graphics sends two codes that is verbal code and a visual code. So they have two opportunities for encoding into long term memory which results in higher retention and learning. Undoubtedly graphics can boost learning, however it will be important to select the appropriate graphic, it should support to the text and the learning goal. Now the next principle that is coherence principle. People learn better when extraneous material is excluded rather than included. Extra information of any kind may prove as a distraction. Coherence principle states that all non-essential element in multimedia messages should be avoided to minimize demands on cognitive resources. When the purpose of a text or text and graphic is to instruct someone the only thing that should be on the page or slide is what is absolutely necessary. This will give the viewer a better understanding of what is being taught. Anything extra would be meaningless and may distract the viewer. This distraction is called seductive details. This can be the words audio or graphic. Of course, they create interest, give the additional fact about the topic or make it more appealing. But these are really not essential for the topic under discussion and should be avoided. When we present an explanation with multimedia, it is better to use fewer words and pictures. Studies have found that students are better able to retain information 
if it is presented as short summary. They are able to focus on relevant words and pictures. Shorter presentations allow learners to select relevant information and organize it effectively. The understandable idea of coherence principle is less is more. It suggests that the images or text that is not essential to the instructional explanation should be avoided totally. While making use of ICT, extraneous words, pictures and sounds should be excluded from the presentation. Presentation should be clear and concise. Text bullet points should be used. Only keywords should be used in PPT slides instead of paragraphs or sentences. So, less is always more. Let us discuss say, uh, third principle that is redundancy principle. Some e-lessons provide words in text and even in audio that reads the text. This seems like a good way to present information. Research however points out that learning is actually depressed when a graphic is explained by a combination of text and narration that reads the text. Because working memory is burdened if an on-screen graphic is explained by both text and narration. It is advisable to avoid narration of text when there is a demanding visual illustration on the screen. This is especially important when working memory is subject to overload. For example, during an animation in which learners have limited control over the pacing or during the presentation of complex new information, it is advisable to avoid narration of text when there is a demanding visual illustration on the screen. This is especially important when working memory is subject to overload. For example, during an animation in which learner have limited control over the pacing or during the presentation of complex new information. In contrast, when there is no graphical information on screen, then research to date would suggest that presenting words in the text and auditory format would help in learning. Now, the next principle that is personalization principle. Learning is better when learner is socially engaged in a lesson either via conversational language or by an informal learning agent. While in a conversation with someone, you are expected to listen and respond in a meaningful way. This requires you to concentrate your attention in what the person is saying. Then you process it and generate a meaningful response. While you write the script for your e-lesson, use first and second person construction. For example, you can use dialogues such as, hello friends, are you ready to learn about legal and ethical issues in using ICT? One example which is shown in figure, in this program designed to teach reading comprehension at a 4th to 6th grade level, the agent Jim is introduced and appears throughout the program to show readers comprehension strategies that have worked for him. So, learning is better when the learner is socially engaged in the lesson. Here, it is done by introducing a learning agent that is Jim. Let us see next principle that is contiguity principle. Principle of contiguity refers to the alignment of graphics and text on the screen. In e-learning, when a scrolling screen is used, the words are placed at the top and the illustration is placed under the words so that when you see the text, you can't see the graphic and vice versa. This is actually a common violation of the contiguity principle that states that graphic and text related to the graphic should always be placed close to each other on the screen for better retention. Learning occurs in human by way of working memory which is an active part of our memory system. Working memory is not very efficient. It can only hold seven facts or item at a time and working memory capacity is needed for learning to occur. So, when working memory becomes overloaded, learning is low. If words and visuals they describe are separate from each other, the learner need to expand extra cognitive resources to integrate them as against in materials in which words and graphics are placed continuously, the integration is done for the learner. So, it is easy for them to learn in an effective manner. Basically, there are two types of contiguity principle. One is special contiguity principle. From the slide, you can understand it is better to learn as the corresponding words are presented. Special contiguity principle states that students learn better when corresponding words and pictures are presented near rather than far from each other page or screen. So, text should be close to or embedded within the images in the presentation. Try to make text and graphics as integrated as possible for effective learning. Next principle or next type of contiguity principle is temporal 
contiguity principle. Students learn better when corresponding words and pictures are presented simultaneously rather than successively. Simultaneous presentation increases the chances that a learner will be able to hold corresponding visual and verbal representations of the same event in the working memory at the same time. So, we must keep the text and visual matter together in the slide. We must keep the presentation of words and pictures in a synchronized manner. We must not have a slide of text and then a slide of graphic illustrating the text on the previous slide as it might lead to confusion. Principle of temporal contiguity is violated in some of the cases like if student processes the entire narration before they see an animation, then they will not learn as much as compared to when they hear the narration while they watch the animation. In some cases, a separation of text and graphic because of the need to scroll from one to other on a computer screen. Even quiz questions are separated from feedback. Sometimes a main lesson page is separated from the linked window that pop up or even using a graphic legend to show the parts of graphic. So, in all the mentioned example, principle of temporal contiguity is violated. If we use temporal contiguity, there are certain advantages. The 12th channel capabilities of human are activated by providing narration to the ears and animations to the eyes. The capacity of each channel is not limited and does not require that learner holds a lot of information in either channel and the need for active cognitive processing of encouraging learner to make connections between corresponding visual and verbal presentations. Next principle is split attention principle. This principle states that students learn better when the instructional material does not require them to split their attention between multiple sources of mutually referring information. Instructional split attention occurs when learners are required to split their attention. Attention is divided and they mentally integrated several scattered resources where each source of information is essential for understanding the material. Cognitive load is thus increased by the need to mentally integrate multiple sources of information. This increase in extraneous cognitive load and it will result in having a negative impact on learning. When we are using multimedia in an explanation, present words as auditory narration rather than visually as on screen text. Information presented orally with animation can be split between the visual and verbal system and processed with greater ease. For example, students who viewed an animation depicting the formation of lightning while also listening to a corresponding narration learn better than the students who viewed the present same animation with corresponding on screen text consisting of the same words as narration. So, all these things should be avoided. Next principle is individual difference principle or principle of individual difference. Every human is unique in nature. Each person experiences a different response to an exercise program. Some of these differences may be related to body size, shape, genetics, past experiences, chronic condition, injuries and gender. Multimedia effect, contiguity effect and split attention effect depend on individual differences in the learner. Each learner is likely to have different learning experiences. Aforementioned three principles are more important for low knowledge learners than high knowledge learner and for high special rather than low special learner. Students who lack prior knowledge had stronger multimedia and contiguity effect than learners with higher prior knowledge. Cognitive theory of multimedia learning states that the learner with high special ability can more easily hold visual images in working memory. They can benefit from the simultaneous presentations of words and pictures. So, we must take care of individual differences among human being while preparing any type of e-content. So, today we have discussed various principles of using ICT in education like coherence principle, redundancy principle, multimedia principle, personalization principle, principle of split attention effect, principle of special contiguity and principle of temporal contiguity. We also discussed about principle of individual differences. So, I hope now you will be able to apply these principles while preparing any type of e-content, maybe PPT or maybe online course 
or it could be video, it could be a small uh, presentation. These principles are based on strong psychological uh, theories. It is also based on some observation and experimentation. So, you should be very confident while using these principles and you should try to give better learning experiences to your students. Thank you.